Hello, I'm Anna Mackay, and this video is on the area under a curve part one of two. So in our integral calculus series, so far we've been looking at the rules to integrate functions, and now we're putting that into a more applied context, um, looking at how integrals can be areas under a curve. So a definition is if f of x is positive and continuous, so f of x is a function, on the interval for x between a and b, then the area bounded by f of x, the x-axis and the vertical lines x equals a and x equals b is given by this function, so that definite integral of f of x. So we've got two examples to put this into practice. We're asked to find the area between the x-axis and the graph y equals x squared plus 3 and these two points. So what does that look like? Well, you'll hear me say this nearly every example, create a picture, a visual for yourself. You can even work out what the answer is going to be using technology, your graphics calculator, um, before you've calculated it. So over here, um, the function's written off to the side, x squared plus 3 from x equals 1 to 3. So that'll help determine what um, view window you're after. So just go into view window, a standard one to start with, but we're only interested in 1 to 3, so let's restrict our window a little bit. X, let's go from 0 to 5, say. Um, you might have a look at what that looks like. That'll do, but I'm just going to eliminate the bottom of the Y, so 0 to 10, let's have. All right, let's calculate what it's going to be. Um, so we shift G solve the integral and ask you for the lower limit. We want 1 and upper limit of 3. And there we are. Even though we can't see it all, the answer is going to be 14.6 recurring. So when you calculate that, know that that's the right answer. So let's go back and do that. So over here. All right, how to set this out. So we have to find the integral. So we're going to write that. It's the integral of x squared plus 3 dx. Officially, we should write that in brackets. Between 1 and 3. So lower number at the bottom, higher number at the top. And now we integrate that. So applying the rules, we have um, x to the power of 3 on 3 plus 3x. Now we always use square brackets here and we put the definite integral numbers there and now we substitute each of them in using round brackets now. So we've got 3 cubed on 3 plus 3 times 3 take away where you substitute in um, where x is equal to 1, so 1 cubed on 3 plus 3 times 1. Now feel free to just put that into your calculator and work it out, but that's a good thing to do, but it's also good practice to do this by hand um, so that you know if you're getting the right answer. So what have we got here? We've got 27 on 3 plus 9, taking away a third plus 3, that brings us down to um, 18, take away 10 on 3, and that's equal to 14.6 recurring. And that's excellent because that's what we found out graphically. You can also put this function here into the run mode of your calculator if you're using Casio um, and calculate it on that screen. So it's a fantastic thing to check your answer in many different ways so that you know in a test or in an exam if you've got that right answer. Okay, next one. Find the area of the region bounded by the x-axis and the part of this curve above the x-axis. So we need to know where the boundary points are. So you must use your calculator here. So across to a calculator. We're going to delete that function and I've written the second one here. So we have 6 plus x take x squared. Start with a standard view window and see where that leads you. Okay there, that's not too bad. So we want it between um, the curve and the x-axis. So as you can see, that's where this um, intersects the x-axis. So what are those points there? Well, they're the roots or the x-intercepts. So let's find them here with our calculator and then we can also find them algebraically. So shift, g sol the root. The first one is negative two and the next one is three. So in this case, let's actually use these because they're clear-cut numbers. But to find the x-intercept, you would put the function equal to 0 and let's solve from there. Oh, maybe we'll do it. It's good practice. So remember, negative 2 and 3. 
So let's go back and solve this. Um, so above the x-axis, we are going to have um, the so 6 plus x take x squared. We're going to find out when that is equal to 0 because that will be the x-intercept. So you need to um, be able to factorize. I like to put it in descending order here and getting rid of that leading negative, factorizing. So with um, any method that you know how, well, we need to end up with negative 1 there. So a 3 and a 2 and a positive 2 and a negative 3. That should do it. Again, you can use your calculators to help you with this. So the two x values that we're after are negative 2 and 3 as we anticipated. So if you ever need to find those x intercepts, put the function equal to 0 and solve for x. So you need to know those quadratic skills. I'm just going to clear that screen there so I can um, now do the integral of this. So the integral of this function, 6 plus x take x squared dx between those two points that we had, negative 2 to 3. Now we need to integrate that. So square brackets and integrating 6x plus x squared on 2, take x cubed on 3, close brackets between 3 and negative 2. Now you substitute each of those numbers in with round brackets, 6 times 3 plus 3 squared on 2, take 3 cubed on 3, close brackets, subtract using your bracket. Now I've got 6 times by negative 2, plus negative 2 squared, 4. Take away um, negative 2 cubed. Again, brackets are very important there. Close brackets. Now, you can just put that into your calculator and work that out, but it's also good practice to do it by hand. Just tidying it up, 6 times 3 is 18, plus 4.5, take away 9. And we've got negative 12, plus 2, that will be positive 8 on 3. Leave it as a fraction as long as you can because it keeps exactness. The moment you calculate um, 8 on 3 and round that, you're going to lose some level of um, exactness in the answer. Tidy that up. We have 13.5 here. Um, add 10, take 8 on 3. And I'm running out of room and the answer is 20.83 recurring. So we, again, could have worked that out on our graphics calculator, the area between those two points. Um, feel free to go back and check that, or that in your run mode will also help confirm the answer. So that's the end of this video. The next one in this series is the area under a curve part two. Thank you.